What's up everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're back to classic rock and we're gonna talk about the one and only Gene Simmons of KISS. First of all, is he good or is he bad? Pretty much every bass player I've covered so far is considered a master in his own genre. About Gene, musicians have mixed opinions. Some people love him, some people hate him. He's definitely not a flashy bassist, but if we go past the makeup, past the fire, the blood and all the stage antics, we get a simple, solid and creative bass player, who came up with some pretty good lines, especially in the 70s. For a band with two guitars, the early Kiss sure had a lot of very catchy and standout bass runs. I've seen Kiss probably 10 times and despite the fact he barely looks at the fretboard, I've never seen him missing a note. He might not be Geddy Lee, but he sure is an excellent example of a solid and consistent professional bass player. Not to mention, he sings perfectly both lead and backing vocals, still to this day. When it comes to composition, he's not a fancy writer, but he does a very clever use of simple elements that make his bass parts groovy and easy to remember. Since we already know he was not around that much during the 80s and 90s, we're gonna focus on the first part of Kiss's career. Number 1. Walking Bass A walking bass is a bass line which creates a feeling of regular quarter note movement, akin to the regular alternation of feet while walking. There's only one thing to do in a moment like this. Strut! With this kind of tune, it's all about the bass. If you take it out, all you get is an acoustic guitar type chord sequence. Walking bass is responsible to bring the groove in all these songs. Do you know when you suddenly feel the urge to bob your head while listening to Strutter or Rock and Roll all night? Well, that's Gene. Number 2. Slides What's so special about a slide? Well, nothing. It's something that 95% of rock bass players use on a regular basis. But there's something about the way Gene uses his slide and the sound he gets out of it that makes it unique. Normally, the slide comes in before a new section, whether it's a verse... an instrumental part. Number 3. Pentatonic Runs The pentatonic scale is known for being the sound of rock, and KISS is no exception. Many bass lines are constructed using simple but effective pentatonic runs. Here's a few examples. Number 4. Build bass lines around the root note and its higher octave. Another simple move that Gene used to construct many cool bass runs. The best example is Flaming Youth, where the whole verse is practically built on one single octave jump. Next is my favorite, the cheeky notes. What is a cheeky note? Well, another very cool trait of Gene's playing is the way he inserts some really high notes here and there inside his bass lines. I like to call them the cheeky notes for the way they pop up every now and then like a spiteful child. Normally this happens in the gap between vocal phrases almost responding to the lead vocals, like it's a horn section. Gene 
Jim brings a lot of melody to the early Kiss songs, but always remember that timing is the single most important thing when playing bass, and with a drummer like Peter Chris, it's not an easy thing to keep. Peter had a lot of good qualities, but according to Gene and Paul, his timing wasn't perfect. So, in the early years of KISS, Gene had to be the clock of the band. If you listen to songs like Christine 16 or Dr. Love, you hear that the bass and the kick don't always go together, and as a matter of fact, in both songs, the lead vocals lean on the bass and not on the drums, which makes them very hard to sing while playing bass at the same time. But that is where Gene excels. Being able to sing while playing complex runs is not something many people can do. Also worth mentioning are the fantastic bass line of Going Blind and the acoustic arrangement of Beth from the 1995 reunion MTV Unplugged show. So is Gene Simmons good or bad? Well, if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm a fan. So the answer is he's damn good. He lays down awesome grooves from album one onward and his simple but catchy lines have inspired millions to pick up a bass. So why does he get so much hatred? My personal idea is that like Nicky Six, Gene Simmons tends to speak his mind and he's always very vocal about things. So naturally, this kind of behavior tends to attract a lot of hatred that has very little to do with his musical abilities, which in my opinion are out of the question. If you want to support this channel, please check out the new video of my band. Give us a like and leave a bass comment. It's the best way to support me and to support this channel. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.